Hey everybody, welcome back. Today what I want to do is look at the includes function that we used last time and we're going to build a little small project here and it's going to span a couple podcasts. Um, I'm going to show you how that include function uh, works in day-to-day -day practical use. Now if you are familiar at all with sites like WordPress or even like Drupal, things like that, that are open source content management systems or blog content management systems, uh, they use this technique a lot too. <clears throat> it's a way of separating elements of your HTML page out. And I'm going to show you how that works in a second. Right now what we're going to do is let's create a new folder. Whoops. How about a new folder on the desktop? And uh, we'll call this Includes. This is going to be our little mini website here. So let's open that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some files into here. Let's open the text editor. And what we're going to do is create a new document. Let's go ahead and set up some HTML formatting. And let's save this document as... We'll go ahead and make this the default. So this will be index. PHP, and I'm going to put it on the desktop in that includes folder. We're actually going to have to move all this in a second. It can't live on the desktop uh, if we want it to run. Um, okay, so now let's do this. Let's close this down and let's open this entire includes folder in TextMate. And as if you've seen these podcasts before, what, one thing I like is you can open all, in TextMate, you can open up a whole folder of images, excuse me, a whole folder of documents, and it will, uh, you know, have this little <coughs> swing out tray over on the uh, left hand side of the screen here. And what I can do is right click on this and let's add a new file. Let's go ahead and create several new files. Let's call this um, header.php. I'm going to do this. This is, looks a lot like the example from the last podcast. Let's do another one. Let's call this footer.php. And then finally, I'm going to create another new folder. And this is going to be called content. And let me explain how this works. The index file up here at the top. This is the main page that your viewer will call. And what we're going to do is we're going to have some various content in this folder. But anyway, in order, it's going to call the header of the document. It's going to call the, the then followed by the content of the document. And we're going to use a variable to switch that content around and have a navigation in here, which is going to be really nice. And then we also have a footer at the bottom. <clears throat> now, one thing that's really interesting about all this is this allows you, uh, as you're going to see in the next podcast, we're going to look at the navigation on this and how we can use CSS to style and how you know, our little um, application here will know what page you're on because we're going to use a variable to do that. So in the content real quick, let's go ahead and add a couple new files. <clears throat> let's call this first one um, uh, about. Uh, let's do another one. Oops, I need to move this into the content folder. Let's do another new file in the content folder and let's call this one products. Uh, and then let's do one more and let's say new file and we will call this contact. So these would be, you know, for a company web page, three simple pages you might have inside. So basically we're going to use one kind of template that's going to hold everything together and the content is just going to switch out depending on what we've selected. So let's go back real quick into the index file. Let's, let's split this out for just a second. What I'm going to do here is uh, real quickly, I'm going to, oh, let's do one other thing. Let's go ahead and add a style sheet to this because we'll need it in the next example. So if I do uh, right click on the, uh, the root directory here and let's uh, do a new folder and I'll call this CSS and let's create one new document in there and we'll call this styles.css. Now we're not going to use this much right now. Um, this will be in the next movie but uh, we are going to use it. So uh, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and in the head of the document I basically want the header to include the navigation. So in the last episode what we did is we took the header all the way down to body and this is going to be the header. And what we're just drop below body and let's do an unordered list real quick. And we're going to put our navigation in this list. First thing I'm going to do is create a link. Inside that link, I'm going to put uh, home. And let's see, let's do another one. And I'm going to do a href. And then let's say we want home. We're going to do the second one will be about. Actually, let's do products. Let's drop another line, uh, list item, and then another link. And then this one will be about. And then finally, let's do the contact page. And you can see that we've got all these straightened out here. Contact, okay. Uh, and let's go ahead and want, we add one more content page here. Let's say new file, and let's do uh, the home.css, or excuse me, PHP. Getting all my extensions crossed up. Okay, so you can see here, over in the content drawer here, we've got our index, we've got our header footer, and then the content is in here, and there's four different 
content types depending on which one the uh, the link is chosen let's go back to the index page real quick okay now what I want to be able to do is this same navigation is going to appear on every page so what I'm going to do is grab the closed URL all the way to the top of the document okay so I have this top half of the document let's go ahead and cut that I'm going to use command X on the keyboard or you can go into the file edit menu at the top and say cut and let's go into the header document and I'm just going to paste that there so it's just a chunk of HTML Okay. And then what we're going to do is let's go grab the last of it. This is the footer now. And let's cut that out. And let's go over to the footer.php document. I'll paste it in there. Okay. So now you can see our index page is blank. So what we need to be able to do is include, we're going to use PHP includes to include these chunks of data. So let's go ahead and do the, uh, the PHP brackets here. Um, if you don't remember that from the last time, it's less than sign, question mark, PHP, and then you have to close it at the end, followed ending with a question mark greater than sign. So that's what we've got here. Now we're ready to roll. First thing I'm going to do is, is uh, type the word include. And remember, this is a built-in PHP function. Functions have parentheses. I need to tell it what to include, and so I'm going to put a string in here, and the string is going to be the name of the file to include. You could also do a variable, but we're not setting that up that way. So let's go ahead and say include, and then let's say header.php. And remember, you need a semicolon at the end of the line. Okay, now let's drop a line. Now we need to include the content. Include, and this is going to be uh, home.php because we want that to be the first thing that the viewer sees when they come to the website. And then finally, let's grab the footer. Include footer.php. Remember the semicolon at the end of the line. Okay, so now what this is going to do, actually this won't work right now because this is actually a, um, a location here. I've given it a string. Home.php, if you'll see over on the left-hand side here, is inside the content folder. So I actually need to have that specified here. We'll say content slash home.php. It's just like a link. It's basically what it is. Well, you're not linking there. You're pulling content from there. So anyway, so here we go. We got the header, we've got the content, and we got the footer. Let's go into this home.php file real quick and say, um, let's just do an H1 tag. We'll make this real obvious. This is the home page. It would be big, bold, and be real dead obvious that this did, in fact, work. Okay, so let's go ahead and close all of this down just for a second here. And we know from the last episode that we've installed MAP on this computer. The includes file folder here, where all my, my, uh, my little documents are, is on the desktop, and it will not run there. So what I need to do is open a new folder. If you don't remember where this is, watch the last episode. But I've created a shortcut to this htdocs. Actually, it's not the last episode, but it's the episode on setting up PHP. The htdocs folder, this is a shortcut over on the left pane of the screen here. But remember, this is actually sitting in the Applications folder. And then you go down to the Map folder, M-A-M-P, because that's the application we're using to run our PHP. And I'll show you what this is real quick. And go into Map, and then we go over, and then it's the htdocs folder. So it needs to be in here. You can create as many folders in here as you'd like. Um, that doesn't matter at all. We're just going to click, drag, and drop that in there and close that folder now. Now let's go ahead and run MAP and we will launch the MAP application and if you remember from two episodes ago it will by default launch the start page. Now we have put that directory into our MAP folder. What I need to do is remember how to get there with the URL and remember at the top I mean, in the URL bar here, it says HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8888. That is th that htdocs folder. So if I delete the rest of this and just hit return, there we go. I see all the list of, of um, folders that are inside my, my development folder here, which is good. And we're going to click on this includes file. And lo and behold, here it worked. Here's our web page. And if I click on here, right click and say view source, you can see that that includes document worked. You don't see any of the PHP, but I do see that I have the header, which is all this down through the navigation, navigation. Then we have our content, which is this is a home page. And then we have the footer down here, the, the uh, bot, close body and close HTML tags. So this worked. We uh, were able to bring in basically a header, some content, and a footer. Now, how do I switch that content out? And that's what we're going to look at in the next podcast here, is we're going to use variables in PHP to determine what the user wants to see as far as contact goes, content goes, and they'll be able to select it from there. So we'll be able to switch from any of those four pages that we created inside. So let's go ahead, and uh, if you've got all this down, I'll see you in the next podcast.